the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Before we bring you today's Tales of the Texas Rangers, let's turn on our microphones down the hall in Studio A here at NBC's Hollywood Radio City, where rehearsal for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show is in progress. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's the way we'll do it on the show. It sounded great, fellas. Phil, uh, would you like to talk to the listeners during this break in rehearsal? Yeah, Bill, I'd love to. Folks, I'd just like to take a few seconds here to remind you about part of the fine lineup of entertainment for the rest of the evening right here on NBC. Right after Tales of the Texas Rangers, listen to the big show with Tallulah Bankhead and all of her darling guest stars. I know you'll want to hear the music and comedy. The big show is lined up for you today. And then we come on to keep you entertained with our show, starring Alice Faye, Frankie Remley, Julius Abruzio, and some band leader, Phil, uh, what's his name? Well, well, please, will you slow up a minute? <laughs> it's the Phil Harris, Alice Faye show, right after the big show today, and I hope you'll listen, folks. And now, let's return to Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Bright Boy. It is 7.45 p.m. June 19th, 1947. A man and a teenage boy are driving along the highway through Harding, Texas, about 30 miles from Corpus Christi. They've been following an expensive new sedan for the past 20 minutes. The driver watches the sedan ahead of him intently. Beside him, the teenage boy polishes his glasses. Sure that's the buggy you want? Yeah. You sure that's the right color, green? Man said he wanted a green one, and that's green. I didn't stop to ask if he meant lime green or chartreuse. Green's green. Okay, okay. Does he have an aerial? Can you see? Yeah, yeah. I don't like to drive without a radio. It gets lonesome. You hear about Sleepy? Huh? Who? Sleepy Horner. He got spikes stealing second. Ah, uh, who cares? Elkin did it. School starts pitching, see? Only he stops and throws the ball to Elkin high. And Sleepy comes sliding now in. Now, cut it. And... Don't care none about Elkin or Sleepy or no pitcher. Ever since you was a kid, all I ever heard out of you was baseball. It wasn't baseball, it was fishing. About the time you growed up. All right, Tom, all right. How fast do you think she'll go? Oh, 100, maybe. Only don't you try it. I drove one once. It was marked on the speedometer for 110, but she couldn't make more than 90. Don't you drive that car up ahead, no 90. You want some cop to stop you for speeding? Ain't no one stopped me yet. Well, you get picked up, Larry, and I don't know you. Now, you remember that. I ain't telling you how to drive this car. Well, I'm telling you, don't you take that car over 50. You're getting too smart for your own good lately. You think everything's a game, like those baseball players of yours. Okay, Tom, I won't speed. You know, I wished I had a gun, like you got. If you get a gun, you'll be dumb enough to use it. What do you think you need one for? I don't know. Just wished I had one. He's turning. Yeah, he'll stop at the grocery store. Always does. Well, I still wished I had a gun. You getting scared? I can take care of myself. When you get down there, you call your cousin Melvin. See if he wants to drive one of the cars across. Mexican can't drive both of them. Yeah, sure. He's slowing down. You know what to do now. Sure. I got the jumper wires already. Connected. Just like you seen me do the other times. On the coil. Try to open that hood quiet like. I know how to do it. Hey, you better. I'm sort of worried you going alone for the first time. I'm telling you I'll be all right. When will I see you, Tom? As soon as I swipe that other car. Probably day after tomorrow. I'll call you and say where you're to meet me. I'll drop you off just past the store. And wait till he gets inside. Okay, Larry. Okay, so long. Hey! Hey, what are you doing to my car? Get away from that car. What do you think you're doing? Leave all me! 
lousy little... Let me alone! You... No! Tom, you're breaking I'm it! I'm turning you over the chair. I'll kill you! Don't you drop that knife! I'll kill you! You'll... I'll kill you! No, no, no! How's that? You... Hey, come on! Come on. Captain Mavis of the Highway Patrol was summoned immediately, and he in turn requested the help of a Texas Ranger. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned, and at 10.30 p.m. met the captain in the hospital where the victim was being given emergency treatment. Howdy, Levi. Howdy, Jace. Glad you made it so fast. Uh, he's uh, in there. How is he? Pretty bad. The boys tell me his arms and chest are all cut up, but he could be a lot worse. Expect he'd be scarred up some, though. I'd see him. Yeah. Dykes, I'm Captain Mavis, Highway Patrol. This is Ranger Pearson. Oh, this will just take a minute, Mr. Dykes. Did you get a good look at this fellow who knifed you? No, not much light. First saw him, he was looking under the hood and it happened pretty fast. Well, how about his size? Was he a big man? Not rightly a man at all. Just a kid. Maybe 16, 17. Hmm. Kid, huh? Can you describe him at all? Well, I, like I said, it was dark. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know him if I saw him. Except he had glasses and they got knocked off. I got him here, Jace. Picked him up on the street. Ordinary steel rim kind. Let's see. Huh. The lens is pretty thick. He must have bad eyes. One lens broken. Yeah. How'd he start the car, Mr. Dykes? You leave the motor running when you got out? Oh, I know better than that, Ranger. I turned it off and took the key... Still in my clothes, I guess. Oh, the kid must have used a coil jumper under the hood to short the ignition wires. Well, that's what we figured, Chase. Well, thanks, Mr. Dykes. We'll get a complete statement later. You better get some rest now. Come on, Levi. Take it easy, Mr. Dykes. Okay. He's lucky the knife didn't get into his face. Yeah. You said on the phone there's been a string of these car thefts. Yeah. It's the fifth. Five expensive cars stolen in the last six, seven weeks. Always done the same way, but nobody could hurt before this one. Somebody always does sooner or later. You recover any of them? Not one. I got a vague description of one of the thieves a couple of weeks back. Young punk wearing glasses. Might be the same kid. Doesn't sound like a kid taking a car for a joyride. They usually abandon it by morning. I know. Looks like somebody's building up a real sweet racket for himself. He's able to get rid of them so fast that you can't find them. The kid's probably not playing a lone hand. Yeah, that's the way I figured. After I talked to the sheriff tonight, I contacted Austin. It was headquarters idea we worked together. Let's get back to your office and call Austin. That pair of glasses looks like our lead. At Captain Mavis' office, I put in a call to the Bureau of Identification and Records in Austin. I asked them for all pictures of teenage boys wearing glasses who might be possible subjects for investigation in this case. The pictures came down on the morning plane. Captain Mavis and I started calling on optometrists in Corpus Christi as there were none in Harding. It was almost noon when we found an optometrist who recognized one of the pictures. From his records, he definitely identified the glasses as a pair he'd made. The prescription of the unbroken lens was identical. Subject's name was Larry Vale, age 17. He'd been picked up in September of the previous year for investigation of car theft and was released for lack of evidence. Larry Vale lived 18 miles outside Corpus Christi in a rural area. We headed out there with a search warrant. Doesn't look like much of a place, just a shack. Think maybe he's in there, hiding? It's possible. What do you want to do? Let's take a look around back. They got chickens back there. Maybe somebody around. Might have left these parts after last night. Ought to be someone here. Kids don't usually live alone. You'd imagine we'd find his folks around. Look, Chase, all that feed on the ground. Chickens haven't had time to eat it all. Couldn't have been fed more than a few minutes ago. Who's that out back? Yeah, there is somebody in the house. Come on. You been in here all the time, mister? Oh, a ranger. No, I just come in. I've been feeding the chickens. Didn't you hear us knocking on the front door? No, I didn't hear nothing. Come on in. I'm Tom Vale. I'm Ranger Pearson. This is Captain Mavis, Highway Patrol. Howdy. Yeah, do you want to see me about something? Larry Vale live here? 
Why are you asking about Larry? I just want to talk to him. What about? Just tell the ranger where he is, mister. Well, he ain't here. Was he here last night? Well, no, he went fishing. Does every once in a while. Stays away a few days at a time. Oh, excuse me. I better turn down the fire on those beans. You any kin to Larry? Yeah, I'm Larry's brother. Why? He in trouble? Maybe. Where does he go fishing? Oh, all around. He was gone when I come home yesterday. Got any idea where we can find him? Maybe a rock port or port of Ranzas. Likes to fish off the jetties. Might even be on a shrimp boat. Does it once in a while. Pick up a couple bucks. How about a can of beer? No, thanks. Me either. Uh, about your brother. Doesn't he have a steady job? Larry? No. He used to work in a packing plant, ice and vegetables. Didn't like it, though. Rather go fishing. Make spending money selling his catch. Still like to know what you want him for. We think your brother stole a car last night. Knifed a man pretty bad. Where? Port Aransas? Harding. Oh, it must be some mistake. Larry wouldn't do nothing like that. Besides, I know he went fishing. We want to have a talk with him about it, anyhow. Okay, but I know you got the wrong guy. Larry's a good kid. He wouldn't cut anybody. He was investigated for car theft last year, wasn't he? Well, yeah. They said he took a car. It was just a bunch of kids. You know how it is. But they couldn't hold him because he wasn't guilty. You can't hold that against him. Mind if we take a look through the house? No, why should I? Thanks. Where's your brother's room? That one right there. Okay to go in? Help yourself. I still say you're making a big mistake. I'd say he likes baseball from all those pictures on the walls. Yeah, he's nuts about it. That's all he talks about, that and fishing. <laughs> Want some coffee? Not for me. No, thanks. Well, if you don't mind, I got to get that pot off the stove before it boils over. Sure. Go ahead. I'll be right back. What do you think, Jish? Well, we know Larry didn't go fishing. I'll look through these drawers. How about checking that closet, Levi? Okay. Awful lot of junk in here. Saves everything, just like my boy. Levi, where's Howard Memorial Ballpark? Not around here. Why, find something? Maybe, four baseball tickets. You must go there often. With the spread and the numbers on them, I'd say they were bought over quite a period of time. Think it means something? Could. I'm going to jot down these ticket numbers. Kid, sure crazy about baseball. Uh, that brother's coming back. Yeah, I'm finished. Well, did you find any knives or any hatches or anything? No, we didn't find anything like that. Well, look all you like. I think we've seen enough. Mm-hmm. Well... Come back any time. You're always welcome. Thanks. We may take you up on that. We went back to the highway patrol office and put out an APB on Larry Vale. We learned that Howard Memorial Ballpark was located in Meade, Texas, 150 miles away. I followed a hunch and called the manager of the ballpark to check on the dates of the ticket stubs found in Larry Vale's room. Come here, Levi. I want you to see this. Your hunch pay off? Uh-huh. I think we got something. A car stolen here May 9th. The kid sees a ball game in Mead May 10th. Car stolen May 23rd. Kids in Mead the 24th. Same routine June 6th and 7th and again last week. And Mead's right on the border. You think those cars are being run over into Mexico? Wouldn't be surprised if the pattern holds up. Larry Vale's due to see that game tonight. And so am I. <laughs> In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Medical science now knows that there are about 21 well-recognized types of heart disease. One of the leading heart authorities, Dr. Paul D. White, declares that the classifying of heart disease into various types is one of the greatest medical advances of our time. This is only one of the great advances such as new surgical techniques, new drugs, new methods of care, prevention, and treatment, which have brought new hope to millions of hearts. New hope for hearts is the slogan of the Heart Fund of the American Heart Association and its affiliates. Your contribution will help our doctors to continue their fight against heart disease, this nation's leading cause of death. Do your share because it is your fight. Send your contribution today to Heart, 
H-E-A-R-T, Hart, in care of your post office. And now back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Bright Boy. I radioed Ranger Clay Morgan and asked him to meet me in Mead. I figured I could get there before the game started and we'd be able to spot Larry Vale entering or leaving the ballpark. I was 30 miles from Mead when it started to rain. By the time I pulled into town, it was coming down hard. Clay was waiting for me at the hotel coffee shop. Might as well sit down and have a cup of coffee, Jase. Why? What's up, Clay? Well, I hate to tell you, but the game's been called off. Mm, I was afraid of that. Could I have a cup of coffee, miss? Any other ideas where we can find him? Mm, there's better than 60,000 people in this town. Might run into quite a job picking him out. Yeah. Thank you. Got a mug shot of him? Yeah, a couple. Here's his picture wearing glasses, taken last year. Just a punk, isn't he? Uh Uh-huh. Here he is again, without his specs. He sure must need them the way he squints. Probably having a rough time now that he's lost them. Unless he had another pair made. I don't think he's had time for that yet. Many optometrists in town, Clay? Oh, four or five. He could be having them made here. I think we'd better start making the rounds in the morning. about it, Jace. Reckon we might have been wrong? Still got a chance. There's another optometrist up ahead. If he's not getting his glasses in this town, we'll have a time finding him. Yeah. Nobody here, Jace. Probably in the back. Hit the call bell. Yeah. Just a minute. Good morning, Rangers. Seems every time I go in back, somebody comes in. I'm sorry if we... Oh, that's all right. I'm used to it. I ought to move the lens grinders up front. What can I do for you, gentlemen? I'm Ranger Pearson. This is Ranger Morgan. Glad to know you. I'm Doc Heath. We're looking for a kid about 17. Figure he might have come here for glasses. Here's a picture. It's about a year old. Just a second. I put my glasses on. This young fellow you're looking for in trouble? He's wanted for questioning. Yeah. Yes, sir. He was in yesterday morning. You positive? Oh, absolutely, Ranger. It's the same one. Matter of fact, it's his glasses I'm working on now. Order the same kind of frames like in this picture. You know where he's staying? I've got his address right here on the order. 128 Junket Street. The name's Sam Jones. Okay, thanks. I'll be back at three to pick his glasses up, doing a rush job for him. Says his eyes were killing him. Been a lot of help, Doc. Much obliged. Glad to be your service, Rangers. Anytime. If we don't find him by three, we'll be back. Ranger Morgan and I went to the address given us by the optometrist. Larry Vale, alias Sam Jones, wasn't there. It was an empty field. Thought for a minute that shack was it. No, he just pulled that address out of his hat. Happened to be this field. Yeah, well, we'll have to pick him up at the optometrist. Go on, get in, Jace. Maybe we shouldn't pick him up, Clay. What do you mean? I got an idea. Suppose you tail him and let him know he's being followed. What's your plan? I'm going to try and get friendly with him. Look at it this way. Larry Vale's just a kid, 17 years old. He steals cars. Four of them we're pretty sure of. He brings them to the Mexican border each time. He can't be in this alone. We've got to find out who's with him. You think you can get him to the kid's confidence? I'm going to try. You better watch him, Jace. He knows how to handle a knife. Yeah. A man in the hospital told me. We drove to the local highway patrol office. They arranged for me to borrow a cheap suit that looked like somebody'd slept in for a week. I put it on and we drove back to the optometrist's office. We got there a few minutes after two. Clay parked the car out of sight while I went in to see the optometrist. Hello, Doc. Howdy. Oh, didn't recognize you in them clothes. Boy been here yet for his glasses? Uh, no, uh, no, he hasn't. Uh, expect him pretty soon now. Huh? Oh, we'll be outside watching. Don't let him know we've been here. Well, I'll try. I'm sure I'll try, Ranger. What's the matter, Doc? Oh, I'm just a little edgy, I guess. I'll just keep calm. We'll do the rest. After Clay parked the car, he walked down to the bus stop at the corner and stood against the wall reading a newspaper. I picked a little hash house directly across the street from the optometrist and sat by the window. We waited. By three o'clock, I was on my third cup of coffee. 
Larry Vale showed up ten minutes later and went into the optometrist shop. Fifteen minutes after that, he came out, wearing his new glasses. He walked east. Clay followed close behind him while I kept pace with him across the street. The next corner, I crossed over and fell in step beside Larry Vale. You want to spend the best five bucks you ever spent in your life, bud? Huh? What do you mean? Shake that ranger that's tailing you. What? It's been on your tail the last half hour like a flea on a hound dog. Where? Back a ways. Don't look around. Oh, you're crazy. Why'd a ranger tail me? If he's got no reason. Why don't you tell him to stop following you? Well, you're not kidding me, are you? Stop by this window. You'll see his reflection. I don't see him. There he is. Back by the building. If anybody knows a tale I do, I had to learn it the hard way. Did you see him? Yeah. How'd I know he's following me? Maybe he's after you. Yeah, they don't follow me long. I watch my back trail too close. He's been following you, and I've been following him. I'll tell you what. I'll show you how to shake him and include that in the price of the five bucks. Come on, let's walk. Not so fast. Take it easy. You ain't a cop, are you? Yeah. That's a good one. I should walk along helping you duck a guy with a badge if I was a cop. Use your head, kid. Yeah, that's right. Just doing you a favor, because I can use the five bucks here around this corner. He's still coming. I don't like this. Of course not. I wouldn't either if I was you. I'm getting out of here. Don't be a chump. I'll be caught before you get a block. This way, in this ten-cent store. Why'd you want to come in here? Just take it easy. Mosey along towards the back. There he is. Came in behind us. There's always an alley behind these ten-cent stores where the trucks unload. There should be a back door here somewhere. Come on. Yeah. Hey, you, wait up! All right, let's move. There's a cab stand on the corner. Okay. Cab sitting there. Hey, is he coming? Don't bother looking. Just keep going. Go on. Get in. All right. We're in a hurry, driver. Go straight ahead and step on it. Just keep going till I tell you to turn. You see, boy? There's nothing to it. An hour later, I was still with Larry Vale. We left the cab after a short ride and walked the last three blocks to the small hotel where he had a room. He insisted on buying some peanuts on the way. I told him my name was Steve Jarvis and let him do most of the talking. Good peanuts, Steve. Want some more? No, it'll spoil my appetite. No. Boy, I want to tell you I'm the luckiest guy in the world, meeting up with you, and I did. How many times could something like this happen? Hmm. It was good goobers. Wish I'd bought some more. You know, often you run into somebody your age already knows the score. Yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> you hot too, Steve? You don't think I'm bumming around because I like it, do you? Right now, I need a steak to get me on my feet. Oh, I owe you some money. <laughs> sure was worth a pin, what you did. No, I don't want your dough, kid. I need some real dough. You gotta find a good deal. Hey, Steve. I got an idea. Why don't you work with us? Yeah? Who's us? Me and the, the boss. We need another guy. I was gonna ask my cousin. As long as we need somebody, might as well be you. No reason why I wouldn't go for that, is there? Maybe. Depends. What's the deal? Hot cars. Cars, huh? Yeah. We lift them mostly around Corpus. Drive them over here. He's uh, bringing in another one today. What do you do with them? Drive them across the border? No, we don't. He's got a Mexican comes up from. But now we're bringing two cars each time. We need another driver to take him across. Well, what do you say, Steve? Maybe he won't like the idea of taking in a stranger. That's what you did for me. He'll go for it. Uh, well, can I meet your boss? No, oh, any time now. I'm supposed to meet him at a cafe. Come on, let's head down there. Okay, kid. Hey, wait. How about that ranger? Yeah, don't worry about him. He's easy to shake. We took a taxi to a small cafe in a tough district just off the main drag. I spotted Clay behind us. He was doing some real trailing now. Larry and I went in and sat in the rear booth. That's where we were to meet the boss. He'll be here any time now. Good food, huh? Not bad. What kind of price you get for the cars over the border? Better than here? Oh, sure. Always a grand over the regular price. Mm -hmm. Sometimes more. Sounds all right. You got a regular contact there? Yeah, Mexican. You got a garage in Rio del Sur. Hey, waitress, how about some coffee, huh? This um, Mexican, he takes some down to Mexico City. 
Ever run into trouble on this end? Oh, I did this time. A guy almost caught me. Taught him a lesson, though. <laughs> I cut him up real good. <laughs> you should have seen the look on his face. Yeah. I'll bet he almost died laughing. Hey, that's good. <laughs> hey, where's that coffee? You sure this boss is coming? Oh, don't worry. He'll be here. Tell you what, Steve. How about us going to the ball game next Saturday? You and me, huh? Sure. We'll get good seats right behind home plate. And then... Here he comes now. Where? In the front door. Boy, when I tell him what you did for me, he'll sure be glad to meet you. I bet he will. Hi, Larry. Everything all right? Hi, Tom. Want you to meet Steve Jarvis. Howdy, Jeff. Beat it, Larry. What? Hold it, Bale. Beat it, Larry. Here's a ranger. Ranger? Hey, grab the kid. Let's go, you dirty. Drop the gun. I'll break your wrist. Drop it. I got the kid, Jake. Please, let me go. Let me go. Put out your hands, Vale. Uh, you okay, Jake? Yeah. I didn't mean to do it, honest. You got his knife? Yeah, Exhibit A. You stupid punk. I didn't know he was a ranger, Tom. How was I to know? A lot of things you don't know, son. Maybe someday you will. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Hello, friends. This is Jack Parr. I'll be with you later this evening with the $64 question, but right now I'd like to remind you about some of the other great shows this evening on the NBC radio network. In just a few minutes, you'll hear the big show with Tallulah Bankhead and a big array of guest stars. And, of course, Meredith Wilson will be on hand to direct the big show orchestra and chorus. You will hear 90 minutes of scintillating comedy and music today on the big show. And then, right after the big show, stick around for the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show with Frankie Remley, Julius Abruzio, Brother William, and the entire Harris household. It's a program that's sure to please you. Later today, Theater Guild on the Air will bring you stars from Hollywood and Broadway in an exciting Broadway play. And right after Theater Guild on the Air, I'll be back with a pocket full of money and the $64 question. I'll be talking to a lot of contestants tonight, and maybe you'll hear one of your neighbors. So why not stay tuned right now to the NBC for a whole evening of great entertainment. I'll be looking for you in our radio audience tonight. And now, let's get back to the tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Larry Vale was found guilty on four counts of auto theft and one count of armed assault. He was sent to the state school for boys at Gatesville until he became of age. His brother Tom Vale pleaded guilty to contributing to the delinquency of a minor and to five counts of auto theft. He received a 20-year term at Huntsville. Mexican authorities cooperated with the Texas Rangers in apprehending the others involved in these crimes. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Ray will soon be seen in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. The cast included Tony Barrett, Sam Edwards, Whitfield Connor, Paul McVeigh, and Herb Ellis. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Bernard Ederer and Robert A. White, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keith. Hal Gibney speaking. Next, The Big Show brings you drama, comedy, and music on NBC.